Hi, welcome to Heroes 2, the making of a game. I am Alyssa, and today we're talking about game design. What does that exactly mean? Are we talking about the images? Or are we talking about the background? So I am here with Pastor Sam, who is the creator of Heroes, and he is going to explain game design to me. Now, Sam, I've never designed a game, and I've definitely not done one on an app. Explain to me, what is game design? When a lot of people hear about game design, they think of the graphics. So the graphics, no. Game design is the mechanics of the game. It's how hard it, it, is it? Is there a currency in the game that you are trying to pursue and that you can spend? Is there, you know, what what are the, the leveling up features of the game? How do you progress and so on? So it's the overall mechanics, is the overall, uh, um, let's say, structure to what a game is. And the number one purpose of game design is very simple. It has to be fun, right? That's, That's the goal, <laughs> you know, but you'll be surprised because we, some people get so caught up in everything else that is happening that by the time you play the game, it's not fun and it needs to be fun. Um, so we have, you know, since the beginning, we try to create this. Uh, it has to be tough, but also easy, easy for beginners um immediate access to the game you know how to play it but mastery needs to be difficult so you know impossible to fully master but absolutely simple for somebody who just begins and those things are not easy to achieve making a very hard game easy making a very easy game also easy making a game that anyone can play but at the same time it's very difficult to master that's the trick and that's my role within this game it's it's trying to figure those out how much do we give per question in terms of mana you know what what happens when we when the hero levels up why does the hero need to level up all of those questions that's the and, and that's probably one of the first things that you do in a game and you keep iterating it until it's fun all right so I, I've, I've heard you talk about this before and like hearing your brain work is just kind of like crazy going through all of us so let's take back to the very beginnings the mechanics of it when you started coming up with the concept of the game and you're having to like pick between this easy and this hard because you want playability, you want people coming back. How do you start creating the foundation of how to do that? You you create drawings, right? You, you just straight up drawings. And I want to show you here uh, something that we haven't shown anybody. It's it's uh, something that it's, it's still very much a secret. Uh, but I'm going to share it for the first time here, and I, I hope that nobody shares this video with anybody else. Don't Just don't do it. No, it's uh, it's a joke. So here is the, um, let me share screen and find the file here for you, application wing. This is what it starts with right here. Uh, you see, this is a Figma board where we started designing events. So this version of Heroes is not going to have events. But in the future, we want to create events where people start to play uh, as teams. So you can have a team. And what does that look like? So this is me drawing kind of what the screen would look like and the features and so on. And here is another, um, let me come to the, here. Here is another screen with how the event progresses and what people will see. And then another screen of how you can have a lobby with your own team. Now you give this to a graphic designer, to the, to the to the art department and what they do is that they transform this into potentially what it will look like see and then we start throwing darts at it we start okay this is not what i want this is what i want um, but it starts with this very simple concept on a on a page that you can just write and then the designer starts asking you lots of questions uh, and then that's how the the concept progresses so so you have this like this vision, and then you bring it to this designer. How do you make sure that it's like got the playability to it? Like the mechanics of it, you're talking about like how you add extra mana. How do you sit there and like ponder like, okay, how are we going to do this? Like, where does that come from besides your crazy brain? <laughs> it, it's not easy um, to know that it's fun until the game is playable. So you, you think it's going to be fun 
you imagine it's going to be fun. You try to prototype it, but until you can see it, 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 you don't know. And I remember when I played Heroes 2 for the first time and I was playing it and it just wasn't fun. I played it twice and I was bored. So, okay, guys, let's rethink some concepts. And then you go back to the drawing board, you change it, and then you start playing it. And then the, the team starts getting excited about it. Okay, now it's be, now it's a little bit fun. Okay, how, how do we... Th then we discuss pace. How many games does it take for you to level up and, and uh, unlock the next hero, for example? Because in, in Heroes 2, for those that haven't played it yet, you start with Adam and Eve. And the more you play, you unlock the next hero. But with every question, you collect mana and experience points. Mana, you swap or you buy effects with. And experience points, you progress in the game. You go from level one to level two, level three. And level two is when you open Noah. Level three, you open uh, Joseph. Level four, you open, level five, you open Moses, right? Why is it not level nine for to open Moses? By the time you get to level 20 or 21, you open John in, in the New Testament. Why is it level 21 and not level 26? Because we progress in the game according to people's uh, mastery. And that's a really difficult thing to do. We had to do lots of mathematical algorithms to figure out, you know, the algorithm that will create the XP. And there's a lot of math involved in that process. Also that the player can start playing it and it will be fun. So I know we had Heroes 1. Okay, and Heroes 2, this is this is the new version of it. We kind of updated it, took it to the next level. So one thing you added to Heroes 2 is the, the capability to challenge other people. So let's, from the game design perspective, how did we go from Heroes 1 not having that to where we are with that? So let's kind of like go through that process so we can kind yeah. of understand a little better. When we had Heroes events, we noticed that the teens really wanted to play with their pastors. You know, it, it was, <laughs> you know, they, they wanted to pay with their parents, the pastors, you know, the elders, those that were supposed to know a lot about scriptures. And the thing we noticed that the teens always won. So it's like, OK, so we, we know the Bible better than you, pastor. You know, and I remember when Elder Wilson played here at the GC, and I think there was an eight year old that beat him in, in biblical knowledge, which was a tremendous experience, because here you have the the. The president of the Seventh Day Adventist uh, um, of the General Conference of Seventh Day Adventists, and this eight-year-old suddenly scores higher than he does, um, and the playability of the first heroes allowed for that, but only in events. So in the second version, it's like, okay, let's let's try and create a asynchronous version of that. What does that mean? It means that you play it when you can, and then when after you finish, you send me a link. And you're challenging me to play the same questions, the same 12 questions you just played. So now I can play the same questions and we'll see who can do it faster. Now, you and I have been exchanging lots of these links yes, and yeah. <laughs> usually usually you destroy me in times and so on, except once that I got lots of effects and I won. And, and I'm going to point out on that one, too, I was taking screenshots of errors that I found. So I see. Okay, otherwise, so that, I totally beat you. That doesn't count, right? <laughs> Just wait till the team's version comes. Maybe we can play in the same team for once. So that's the progression. You take a feature that you can see people are having fun and enjoying, and now you make it so that they can do it within the game. The mechanics of how that works, which server creates the connection. There is an entire background infrastructure to make that simple fun happen. And that's the technical team. The engineering team loves these problems. You throw problems at them, they go... I don't know how I'm going to do this, but then they figure it out and it's beautiful. Now, I saw that you showed us those the screens a little bit earlier about a tournament. Um, and I actually have seen those, the original artwork here. Now, that's not coming out with this original new phase release, but it is definitely something exciting to be looking forward to. So the thing I like about this game, and it's kind of something you just kind of touched on a little bit, is that when you're creating the game design, you have to think about the different users. So there are going to be some people who are not competitive. They just want to like increase their Bible knowledge. But there are going to be people who are kind of like you and I, who are going to try to be like, I can totally beat you. And so I love the fact that you've, you've made sure that that component is in the game but you're not having to challenge everybody. 
So for those that are non-competitive, just want to learn. And so this is all part of that game design mindset is trying to figure out how to get all different kinds of players wanting to play that game. Correct? Absolutely. And, and this is one of the main changes from the first heroes. The first heroes, you start with 60 seconds. And every time you get a question wrong, you have your time. So if you get three questions wrong, you're done. And so a lot of people that just wanted to learn the Bible, they couldn't play it. It's as simple as that. Children who took a while to read properly, you know, six-year-olds, seven-year-olds, they're learning to read. They wanted to play it, but it was too fast. So this version, you have 12 questions and you can take as long as you need. Even one of the effects is called the Daniel effect, which is very cheap. It's the cheapest effect. You can have all 12 Daniel effects for every game for, you know, I think four or five games that you play. It's very cheap. What is, and when I say cheap, the money, um, there's no money. It's, it's mana that you collect. Uh, so you don't, you cannot buy effects with cash. It's mana that you collect as you answer the questions properly. That's win for parents because we're tired of paying for stuff on people's games. Pain, Just pain, 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 pain. No. <laughs> so when it comes to, to the Daniel effect, it reveals the Bible verse where it's found. So if you just want to take a Sabbath afternoon, a, a, you know, a, a Tuesday morning that you just want to study the Bible and get to know these stories in a fun way, you just figure out the question, you open your Bible, you look at it, you answer, you go forward, and then you learn as you play. And we made that possible in the game design of the second Heroes, Heroes 2. So what other um, components are new in Heroes 2 in the game design area that were not in the original Heroes? Um. We have new effects, lots of them. Uh, the Abraham effect, for example, wasn't there. It cuts. Right. I'm going to interrupt you real quick. What is an effect? You keep talking about uh, okay. it. It's not like they're important to the, the design of the game, but what is it? It's like a power up. So you have, a, a, as you're trying to answer, most people don't know all the questions, right? So you come to a question you don't know. You can use, for example, the Lazarus effect, which means that if you answer wrongly, Ah, you resurrect and you can try again. It gives you a second chance. Um, if you have, for example, a question again that you're not sure of, you can use the Jonah effect and you get to skip the question like Jonah skipped the mission. And um, all of these effects are very important. Let me show you here from the website, which everyone can go to, heroesbibletrivia.org. Uh, here is the website. And you get the effects over here. Um, so here is the Daniel effect that I was talking about. Let's go for the, the, oh, this is in Portuguese. I was actually going to say, this is actually really cool because this actually looks like now the game is not just in English, correct? Four languages for now and more languages to come. Correct. So you have four languages. So you're having to think game design from multicultural aspect as well. What yes. Everybody. Very complicated, but Very yes. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, here is the Elijah effect. It gives you a double portion of experience points. And you know where that reference comes from. Friday effect gives you a double mana. Uh, the Jonah effect that I mentioned, it, it you get to skip the question like he skipped the mission. The Joshua effect freezes time for five seconds, just like the sun stopped for Joshua. And my favorite yeah. effect, the Jesus effect. It removes your errors and it shows you the way, uh, pointing to the right answers. And there are other effects. You can check it out later. Yeah, so actually... Good news is we actually have some entire segments on how to use the effects to the best of your ability. And I'm kind of excited about that because although I've played against you, um, I don't know how to use them well. I just do it from sheer knowledge, which I'm still beating you at. Dig, dig, dig. I get it. <laughs> Anyways. Okay. So let's, let's kind of like wrap this up here. Like with game design, what do you think is the most rewarding part of creating this game? As, part, as far as game design goes. There are two reactions that are absolutely fantastic. One is when people start playing, they see the effects, they hear the music, they see the whole thing, and then suddenly they smile a little bit. And then they smile a bit more. That's one reaction. The other reaction is when they, they, they're, you know, trying to play the game and then they go, and they get really into it, trying to get it right. And, and you know, and those two reactions for a game designer is like, you made it. After three years of effort, this is the result. People having fun and people being challenged uh, within the game. Those two are, are the priceless uh, results that you're looking for. 
thank you for being here. And um, we appreciate learning a little bit more about game design and like all the stuff that's behind it. And I hope it helps you understand a little bit more about like all the stuff that goes into it. It's not just like putting stuff together. There's a lot of thought that goes behind making it playable and interesting and something that people want to keep going back to. So we would love to actually hear your thoughts. What is it that makes you keep coming back to the game? So once you start playing the game, post the comments below and let us know what is your favorite part of the Heroes Bible trivia game. So thank you for joining us and hope you come back and watch many more of these.